Hey designers, my name is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your websites. If you are new here, consider subscribing. In this video, I will show you how to disable Gutenberg blocks and what will happen when you switch between Classic Editor and Gutenberg. I will also show you what happens if you continue to work with Gutenberg blocks for some time and then come back to Classic Editor. Let's get into the video. So let's start with how to disable Gutenberg. It's simple. Just go to your plugins, add new plugin and search for your classic editor. And once you find the classic editor plugin, which is by WordPress contributors, just install and activate it. And the moment you activate classic editor, your Gutenberg block editor will automatically be disabled. You don't have to do anything else. Just activate this Gutenberg will be activated and deactivate this and then Gutenberg will be active. So this is like a toggle to switch between classic editor and Gutenberg. As you all know that Gutenberg works based on blocks. So everything that you type or add in Gutenberg is a block. And in case you don't know how Gutenberg works, just check out getting started with Gutenberg tutorial in Gutenberg tutorials playlist. It will be there for you. So let me add some content. And as you all know that Gutenberg comes built with a lot of blocks and of course you can add third party blocks as well. In fact, in my website, I have Elementor blocks for Gutenberg and Ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg third party blocks installed. So what I'll do is that I'll compose two posts using Gutenberg. One using only the blocks defined by the first party Gutenberg editor which is the actual add-ons that come bundled with Gutenberg and I'll compose another post that's truly made up of blocks defined by third parties such as Elementor and Ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. So let's do it. So I'll just give it a title. I'll just call it first Guten post and your Gutenberg editor inherits properties from the customizer or from your theme. So whatever you define in your theme, font size, font color, all those will be inherited by the Gutenberg editor and that's how you work. You can check out getting started with Gutenberg tutorial found on the channel for more information. So I just typed in my heading and I'll type some text. I'll just paste it. So this is a paragraph block. Everything in Gutenberg is a block. I'll just hit enter to create a new block. I'll maybe add an image. So I'll just pick an image block. So maybe I'll pick this image right here for my image block. And anyway, never mind. So that's the image block. You can also hit enter to create another block. And maybe this time I'll click on the plus button and enter maybe a code. So I'll just say this is a good post. So here I have three blocks on my post. The first one is by default the title of the page or post. And the second one is a paragraph block and an image block and a quote block. So let me publish this post. I'll just click on publish. So this is live now. So it will be available within my posts. I'll just go back and I'll create another post which is made up of only third party blocks. So I'll just make another Gutenberg post or compose another Gutenberg post which is entirely made up of blocks from Elementor and ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg plugin. So I'll just say this is my second Guten post and then I'll not type any content. I'll just pick Elementor block and I'll just pick a page or template to insert into my Elementor block and then I'll click on this Elementor block. I'll add another one after this. And this will be my ultimate add-ons block. So I'll add something from ultimate add-ons. Gutenberg blocks plugin. So maybe I think content timeline. It looks good. 
so I'll just use this you can also choose the number of items here you can also reset it and there are other settings for you adjust white space and I'll just click on publish so I have two posts on my website the first one is entirely made up of blocks defined by Gutenberg itself and the second post is made up of blocks defined by third-party plugins such as Elementor and Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg. So that's great. So the question here is what happens when I work with Gutenberg for some time and then disable Gutenberg and go back to Classic Editor? Well I'm pleased to tell you that if you use the right third-party blocks you'll be able to switch between the Classic and Gutenberg plugin or the other way around seamlessly without losing any of your content or without breaking your website. Let me show that. So here's the preview when my Gutenberg editor is active. So this is the preview of the second Guten post which is made up of Elementor block and ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg block. So this is the second block and this is a post made up of blocks made up of the first party Gutenberg blocks. So let's go to plugins and as I told you when you activate the classic plugin Gutenberg will automatically be deactivated. So let's activate the classic plugin and let's see how that's affecting these two posts or pages. I'll refresh this one and also refresh the first Guten post. So these are the posts or the content which are actually defined by my Gutenberg. As you can see there is literally no change and there is even literally no change in here. That's because these Gutenberg blocks are designed to work either way around. So you can either continue working with Gutenberg and even when you switch back to the classic editor plugin they won't break your website. That's the beauty of Gutenberg. Actually Gutenberg blocks are designed to work across platforms not just WordPress. You can take Gutenberg blocks, put it on another platform and it will still work because these are all coded in HTML JavaScript. So they are basically built on web standards. So they will be displayed no matter what you are using. So it doesn't matter if you are really using classic editor or the Gutenberg editor. It's just your personal choice. In fact, let me go ahead and click edit post on both the posts and let's see how that's shown on the back end. As you can see this is my classic interface and it converts everything into a readable text. It's quite simple. So it converts everything into a readable text and it converts each and every block and embeds them into my classic editor plugin or the classic editor block. So whatever you type will just become a part. So your quotes block will become a quote in classic editor. Your image block will become an image. Your paragraph block will become a paragraph. It's that easy. So it's okay and it's actually great to use Gutenberg. And even if you decide to switch back, nothing's gonna happen. What about the other way around? Now that we've activated the classic editor plugin, let's go ahead and create a post in classic editor. And let's see what will happen when, it, when we deactivate the classic plugin and how to switch the classic editor blocks into Gutenberg blocks. So I'll just say this is my third Guten post. So as you all know, my third Gutenberg post. So I'll just add some content. Laura Mipson would be great. I'll just paste this so that's one paragraph I'll remove this I'll paste the whole paragraph here and then I'll maybe add an image you know how to add an image by clicking on add media this is kind of like the vintage way of doing things so I'll just add this table I'll just insert it and 
I'll try to add something else. So I'll just say I'll convert it into a block code. So we'll do that. And yeah, so this is a post composed by my Gutenberg editor, sorry, the classic editor. I'm actually willing to embed an Elementor template. So I'll just go to templates that I've designed in Elementor. I'll actually copy the short code of a template to see how that's compatible. So I'll actually use this short code. I'll just copy the short code from Elementor. It's a great plugin. So I'll just copy the short code and I'll publish the post using the classic editor. So the post is published. I can view the post. You can see that the URL here. So this is my third good post. There are my paragraphs. And remember, the customizer still remembers the settings that we have set when the Gutenberg was active. So literally, your Gutenberg won't have any effect on your website, except that it will help you create your content in a better way. So the paragraph, so the text color and the fonts, everything will just be with your theme itself. So we have all the content here. So now that we've defined everything, so let's go ahead and actually deactivate the classic editor plugin. So I'll, I'll just click on refresh the preview. Now it will actually load the Gutenberg preview, but not the classic editor preview. And I'll also see how this would affect the front end of the website. <laughs> well, no effect. As you can see, literally no effect. Literally no effect whatsoever. Plus, whatever you add with the classic editor plugin will have its own block called classic block. So you can click on the settings for this block. And you can see that. So you can continue to work with it the way you did before within the classic block. Or if you want the Gutenberg way of working with it, you can click on the options button and you can click on convert to blocks. So that will basically convert each and every data or content in your previous classic editor block to its respective blocks. So your text would be converted to a paragraph block, your image will be converted to an image block, and your code will be converted to a code block, and so on. So you can work either way around and Gutenberg is designed to give you the best possible experience. I don't know why there's a lot of negative press around this, but this is Gutenberg and there's a lot more that Gutenberg do that the classic editor couldn't do. I'll show all that in the upcoming videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace. And that's it for now and hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you need anything else, don't hesitate to ask. I'm ready to help you. Catch you in the next video. Peace.